These are five ways to not have to ask for directions and maintain our delusion of self-reliance. But there's a lot of cash on this table, so I wanna show you how to build something that does the job for under 300 bucks. Garmin's biggest, baddest bolt-on for big spenders is the Zumo series. It's cutting-edge hardware powered by an unparalleled data empire that is Garmin. If you wanna slap 800 bucks on the table and get more features than you'll ever need just in case you do, give the Zumo a try. If an iPad in the dash triggers your corporate PTSD, there's Beeline, a minimalist's approach to navigation showing you only what you need to know at any given moment. Why stare at your phone when you can clip this little gizmo to the bars? You don't need your phone to get around the city. Actually, you do need that, though. This doesn't work without it. If you've got a smartphone or access to one of the seven cracked iPhones in your sister's glove box, there's the Gaia GPS app. Why spend more money on hardware when you've already got a computer in your pocket? Plan routes on the go or ahead of time and download everything for offline use. And enjoy one less lithium ion battery to maintain in the backcountry. What? what? What is that? It's like a brochure of like the earth? That's right, kids, it's a paper map. But it doesn't lead to treasure or have the Declaration of Independence on the back, it's a butler map. Designed by riders for riders who want to truly unplug and bug out. Speaking of treasure hunting, there's an analog method of step-by-step -step guidance using enduro, dual sport, and adventure racing. Roll charts offer a unique user experience that's kind of like the beeline in that you only see what you need in the moment and the rest is revealed as you roll through your route. It's antiquated but classic and it has its place in two-wheeled adventure culture. Ryan made this one, so we'll see where we end up. So I've got my Zumo securely mounted to the bars with the RAM mount that it comes with, and it's charging through the dock that I've hardwired to the battery. The USB port doesn't really pump enough juice for full brightness, which we all deserve after dropping 800 bones. We can do a cold search or filter down for a location, then generate a route. The Zumo's unique benefit is the slider to decide how fun we want it to be. Fun, according to Garmin, is a result of certain combinations of speed limits, turns, and changes in elevation. I don't fully trust a computer with how much I'll enjoy my ride, but I'll give it a shot. What I do love about this unit is the 3D mapping. Tracking in real time through a virtual landscape gives me a more complete preview at a glance. It's tougher to gauge changes in elevation with a 2D overview unless supplemented by an elevation chart. The Zumo lets us play Star Fox and just preview the world ahead. It almost feels like cheating in the dark or fog or smoke. Speaking of which, there's weather updates, a visual route planner, I've got routes by popularity, and there's a group riding function so I can keep track of my buddies with Zumos or without if they download an app. You can play music directly off the unit, so dust off those old Napster MP3s. For a gear geek, it's a dream, but it's excessive in features and price, and it can't navigate me out of debt, so let's trim the fat and try the beeline. Line. Straight to the point. It looks like I know where I'm going, unless you look closely. Woo. I keep my phone safe and testicles lightly radiated. I let the beeline tell me where to go step by step. The deal breaker about the beeline though is that you still need your phone. It's doing all the heavy lifting through the beeline app. So this unit is essentially an auxiliary display that we pay for, then we use the free app to plan our routes and track our rides. But if I still have to have my phone on me, couldn't this little minimalist display just appear within the app? Oh, actually it does. Okay, so this is really just something else I need to remember to charge. Plus the directions are laggy. Originally these things were for cyclists, but at 70K, the arrow can't always keep up. Ultimately, this piece of hardware isn't really adding any functionality. It's just improving the aesthetics of the cockpit. But for the cleanest bars, we can go back to basics. Butler maps are a part of motorcycle history, and instead of trusting an algorithm, we can put our faith into decades of research by riders who have ridden these routes and categorized them in terms of difficulty and a human perception of what's fun and what's not. Over the years, they've modernized these maps as much as one could. I used a Butler map on the Washington BDR last year, and it basically is a brochure. I've got the full route on one side, close-ups of each stage on the other, with an elevation chart and helpful breakdowns of the more challenging sections. It's all you need for a traditional experience or for a pre-game research session before hitting the road or trail unplugged and unencumbered. Butler Maps has most of the Western US covered and more keep coming. Uh, huh. Of course.
course it does suck having to stop all the time to take the map out. Enter the roll chart. For enduro events and backcountry shenanigans, it's got the minimalism of the beeline with the benefits of analog. Pre-plan your race route in roll chart format online, print it out, and roll it on. No batteries, no notifications, no past, no future, total navigational zen. Ryan actually rigged this one up for me and I don't even know where I'm going, so let's find out. What the hell? This is back where we started. Ah. Ha. Obviously, you can't change plans on the go. It's more of a retro navigational novelty at this point. I mean, you're going in blind. Our devices should aid us, remind us where to go, or give us a heads up if we space out. And since most of us already have satellites at our disposal through our phones, maybe buying more lithium is redundant. I've opted for the Gaia GPS app. Regardless of how you're traveling, Gaia is a mandatory download. Once you create an account, your Gaia profile becomes your adventure identity. The interface allows you to do all the typical planning and debriefing at home on your browser or trail side in hand. You can create subfolders for your saved routes and pull data from hundreds of maps that you can overlay and then adjust the transparency. The only downside is the hardware is your phone. Unless it's a Sonom XP8. Originally designed for first responders and fire, law enforcement, and EMTs, you can find these burly little androids on sale for two or three hundred dollars US on eBay or Walmart Marketplace, and there's tons of refurbished units out there for less. It's a touchscreen with three programmable buttons, which is particularly useful when the screen is wet. It's totally waterproof and it can take a beating. RAM makes an $80 dock for it, and it charges through these little contacts, so I don't even need to fuck around with a plug when I want to charge it. Just snap, lock, wrap. It also has a removable battery, so I picked up a few extras for emergencies. Each one lasts a full day if I'm running Gaia, Spotify, and my Speedo app. If you rely on a smartphone for work and social media for boredom, you'll hate it. As a phone, it's laggy and it sucks. Even the camera has a 90s filter on it. But if you just ride motorcycles and call 911 every once in a while like me, it's ideal. Now, Sonim is an obscure brand, but if I had any doubts about them, they went right out the window when I met the only other guy I know to own a Sonim phone my first day at Fort 9. 1500 bucks for an iPhone, 800 for a Garmin, 50 for a piece of paper that can't roll with the changes in plan, or 250 for a sick ADV computer that can still totally order a pizza. Easy choice. So the Zumo is rad, but it's a lot. And Beeline's cute, but kind of pointless. Roll charts are fun for adventure racing or sending your mechanic on a wild goose chase, but with the Butler map and Guy backing me up, I'm more than ready to hit the Oregon BDR next month, so Ryan can put these on my tab. Thanks for watching. Dog's like. I always kind of wanted a Chihuahua. Yeah, dude. I don't give a fuck about money. I don't give a fuck about ribs and friendship. <laughs>